My name is Eric Kazarian. I am an otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon, also known as an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and one of the relatively few surgeons in the world that specializes in the surgical treatment of snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. On the last video, I discussed the importance of determining the specific causes of snoring and sleep apnea in an individual patient to enable targeted, effective treatment. In this video, I will discuss treatment of the nasal region. Nasal blockage, also known as nasal obstruction, can be an important cause of snoring and obstructive sleep apnea itself. It can also make it more difficult to tolerate positive airway pressure in patients with sleep apnea. Successful treatment of nasal blockage depends first on determining the specific cause, which is often easier said than done. Anything from the tip of the nose through the entire nasal cavity and sinuses can be a source of nasal obstruction. Once you identify the causes, there is a wide range of treatments, including medications and procedures. This video covers treatment, including surgery, for the most common possible sources of nasal obstruction. The external nose, nasal septum, turbinates, and sinuses and polyps. The external nose, which you see when you look at your nose from the outside, can be one cause of trouble breathing through the nose. Sometimes the nose is narrow, and sometimes the sides of the nose collapse when people breathe in. External nasal dilators, of which breathe right strips are one type, can be especially helpful in someone who has significant collapse of the sidewalls of their nose when they breathe in, and there are procedures available to do the same thing. You can watch yourself in the mirror when you breathe in normally to check to see if you are one of those people. Inside the nose, we all have a nasal septum that separates one side of the nose from the other. When it sits over to one side or sticks out to narrow the breathing passage, it is called a deviated septum. Although a deviated septum is extremely common, not everyone with a deviated septum needs it treated. The key is how badly it is deviated and whether the deviation itself is a major cause of nasal obstruction. The septum is made up of cartilage, shown here in blue and white, and bone, shown in tan and white. Treatment of a deviated septum requires a procedure called a septoplasty that is performed in the operating room, and there is a discussion of the procedure on my website. Septoplasty involves removal of the portion of cartilage and bone that blocks the breathing passages, being careful not to remove the key portions of the septum along the bridge of the nose and the area between the nostrils that help give the nose its shape. Inside the nose, in addition to the septum, there are three pairs of what are called turbinates that extend from the sides of the nose into the breathing passages. The lowest ones, called the inferior turbinates, are most commonly involved in nasal obstruction because when they become enlarged, as shown in this picture, they can block breathing. Here is a picture of the side view of the turbinates. Enlargement of the turbinates is usually due to allergies or reaction to pollution or irritants like tobacco smoke that cause swelling of the lining of the nose. Medications as well as procedures can be very helpful in reducing the size of these turbinates and typically medications are tried first with procedures to reduce the size of the turbinates if the medications do not work well. There are a number of surgical techniques to reduce the size of the inferior turbinates and their blockage of nasal breathing. These include removal of the bone that forms the inner structure of the turbinates and controlled cauterization designed to shrink the tissue covering the bone. There is more of a discussion of turbinate surgery on my website. Sinuses are basically spaces in our head that connect to our nose through small passageways. There are maxillary sinuses in our cheeks, frontal sinuses in our forehead, ethmoid sinuses that are almost like a honeycomb of sinuses between our eyes, and the sphenoid sinuses not shown in this diagram in the back of our nose. Colds, allergies, or other factors can narrow these passageways to trap mucus inside the sinuses leading to infection or sinusitis and possible formation of polyps. Sinusitis and polyps can cause blockage of breathing through the nose, in addition to a number of other problems, and medications as well as surgery may be required to address these. Sinus surgery is typically performed in the operating room using telescopes and small instruments passed through the nostrils to remove small pieces of bone and soft tissue to open the passageways connecting the sinuses to the nose. There are a number of benefits of sinus surgery, but the goals are usually to open up space for breathing, decrease how often a patient gets sinus infections or polyps, and to make infections easier to treat when they do occur. My website includes much more information about sinusitis and sinus surgery. I hope you continue to the next video, where I will discuss procedures available to treat what I call the palate region.